There are a few things that are so, so, so important that you review before taking your dose calc exam in nursing school. These things are absolutely going to happen or show up on your exam, and I want to make sure that you are prepared for when they throw them at you. So we're gonna walk through what they are in this video. So click that subscribe button and click the notification bell and let's dive in. Hello my friend, my name is Christina Rafano from nursingsos.com and one of my favorite, favorite, favorite topics to teach on for nursing school is dose calc. I love dose calc. To be honest, I thought that I was so bad at math before nursing school. I kind of was really bad at math, but over the course of going to nursing school, taking those dose calc exams and really figuring out how to answer these questions properly, I got pretty good at it. And so I have taught so many students how to ace their dose calc exam. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. I really wanna make sure that you are super prepared to take it because these questions can be really tricky. So there are really a few things that I wanna make sure that you know about before and, and that you review before you go in to take your exam because they are gonna show up. So the first one is you've gotta make sure that you understand dimensional analysis. So one of the biggest pushbacks that I get about dose calc is, Christina, why don't you use the formula method or any of the formulas that are available? So formulas are great for some things, but because they're not great for everything, I do not recommend that you start with formulas when you are in nursing school. So formulas, especially like the desired over have formula, um, that's super common and you can use that for basic, basic dose calc problems like PO meds or something like that, where there's not multiple conversions happening. You don't really have to, you can really just plug in the numbers. It's like plug and play but that becomes a major, like major problem, my friend, when you get into to the higher levels, uh, so to speak, uh, or just the more advanced dose calc problems, things like heparin, Pitocin calculations, IV calculations, or just even uh, tablet medications where you, or, or um, IV calculations where you have to do multiple conversions in the same problem. So that's really where that desired over have formula, it just breaks on you. Like it just will not work. You, you can't just plug in um, a ton of numbers into that. It doesn't work. So that's why I teach it this way. Uh, we call it the railroad track method or dimensional analysis is what it's called. And it is so, 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 once you understand how to use it because it's going to um, it's going to work for whatever dose calc problem you are dealing with in nursing school. So once you have the system down, the system that I teach, that way you can walk into any dose calc exam and look at any problem. And if you follow those six steps that I teach, you will get it right. It's just how it works. It is so, so cool. I really, really encourage you to do it that way. Um, of course, if you want to stick with the formula method, that is totally, totally fine. That's your prerogative. But I would just highly, highly encourage you to uh, check out the, <laughs> the dimensional analysis way. Check out my videos on the six step process for how to get every single one of your dose calc problems right. Because I really, really do believe that it's the best way to do it. And I really encourage you to check that out and see what works best for you. Because I don't want you to ever get to a dose calc exam say when you're in med surge or pediatrics or your OB rotation and have that formula method break on you. You want to make sure that you understand how to do heparin calculations, Pitocin calculations, IV calculations, all of those things. Um, and that is what that uh, my six step process will help you to do. Now, the next thing that's so, so, so important that you review before you take your dose calc exam is dose calc conversions. Now, these are right out of our dose calc system. These are all dose calc conversion flashcards. So these are all the, the dose calc conversions that you've got to know before you go in to take your exam. Now, the thing is, and maybe Maybe this is something that a lot of nursing students maybe miss or uh, don't really realize is that when you go to take uh, your NCLEX or any nursing exam or your dose calc exam, your instructors and that test, they're not going to give you these. <laughs> they're not going to give you the uh, conversion factors that you have to know to answer the problems correctly. <laughs> so you've actually got to have these memorized, which uh, is kind of a bummer. But um, there are 
while there's a whole bunch of flashcards here um, to help you out with it, it's kind of a bummer that you do have to memorize them all, but it does make it easier when you have flashcards to help and you have a whole list of them, um, all, the, all the conversions that you need to know. Um, it's just easier to just go through one at a time uh, to make sure that you understand them all because you really do have to have them memorized and in your, in your head before you take the dose calc exam. Please, please, please don't get tripped up when you walk into your exam. Please be prepared. Have these conversion factors down, like have them solid in your mind, okay, before you walk into your dose calc exam. Um, I don't want you to miss any problems because you didn't understand these. Um, so also, um, I should mention, I actually have a free cheat sheet that will walk you through all these conversions as well. So definitely check that out. I will put the link down below in the description for you to check that out. Um, it's just a, it's a dose calc conversion cheat sheet and that'll walk you through uh, all the conversions that you need to know. So uh, that will hopefully, hopefully be helpful for you. Now, the third thing that you really need to make sure that you review before taking your dose calc exam. Now, my friend, this is a big, big one. Um, I would put this probably above conversions uh, as far as like what nursing students tend to miss. This is one that I get emails about all the time um, and that is rounding rules. Okay, and not only rounding rules actually, but also zeros. Like what do you do with the zeros and where do they go? <laughs> so rounding rules and zeros are so, so important. Like these rules, you could get every single question right on your dose calc exam, but if you round incorrectly or use zeros in the wrong way, the answer will still be wrong. So that's why it's so important. Um, I don't, I. I don't often see nursing students reviewing these before going into their exam. And so that's something that you really wanna make sure that again, you have down solid before you go in to take your dose calc test. So rounding rules. Um, the first thing you wanna make sure that you're looking at is when you get to a question on your dose calc exam, you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to what they expect you to round to. Are they asking for a whole number? Are they asking for tenths? Are they asking for hundredths, okay? That's uh, like alarm bells need to be going off in your mind, all right? Like if they're asking you for something specific, make sure you do that. So if they're asking you for a whole number and you get 2.1, then you're gonna round down to two. And we're gonna cover those rounding rules in just a minute. But you wanna make sure that you're following exactly what the question says, okay? So make sure that if they say to round to the hundredths, that you have two places after that decimal point. All right, that is the hundredths place. Make sure that you have two decimal points after that uh, decimal, two, uh, two decimal places, I think that's the proper terminology, after that decimal for hundredths. And if they're asking for tenths, it's one decimal place over from that decimal. So that's the uh, uh, just, um, uh, I would say, I guess that's not um, that's not a rounding rule, but it is like a place value rule that's very, very important to know before your exam, okay? So make sure you're watching for that on your questions, that you are uh, writing the answer in the way that they're asking for, or you could get it wrong. So the rounding rule is that anything five and above, you round up, okay? So if, if the answer is 3.5, five and they're asking you for a whole number, you're going to round up to four, okay? And if the answer is four and below, then you round down, all right? So if, if they're asking you for a whole number, but you get 3.4, then you're gonna round down to three. Does that make sense? As long as they're asking you for a whole number, okay? If they're asking you four tenths, then that's okay. Both of those answers would be fine. 3.5 or 3.4, cause that is to that first decimal place, right? But if they're asking you for a whole number, you need to make sure that you are rounding up or down appropriately. So if it's five or greater, you round up. If it's four or lower, you round down, all right? Now here's one that's kind of tricky that uh, some nursing students I've noticed just don't know. I'm not sure why. Um, maybe they're not teaching this in nursing school. I'm not too sure why this is happening, but um, that is nurses are leaders, not followers. Okay. Remember this. That's a, a memory trick for zeros. This is your, like, this is a big deal. Zeros on your dose calc exam. They really, really matter. Okay. Especially when you get to the NCLEX. So remember your memory trick, nurses are leaders, not followers, which means you use 
uh, leading zeros and not trailing zeros, all right? So if you get a, an answer on your dose-calc exam and it's like 0.5, all right, what are we gonna do if the answer is 0.5? So decimal, five, okay? You're not gonna write it as 0.5 because here's the reason. If that decimal gets lost, if it, gets, if, if, if it just doesn't get transferred in the documentation or something, then it's gonna look like a five, right? And there's a big difference between 0.5 of a medication and five. <laughs> right? That is a huge difference. If we want to give a dose of 0.5, but we accidentally give five, that's a huge, huge problem. So that is why we use the memory trick. Nurses are leaders, not followers. So you add leading zeros, not trailing zeros. So when you are looking at a number like 0.5, if that comes up in your dose calc exam and it's, you get an answer of 0.5, you're going to add a zero to that beginning of it. So you're going to write it on your dose calc exam as 0.5. Does that make sense? Now, here's another thing. Nurses are leaders. You're going to add a leading zero, 0 0.5, but not followers. Okay. You're not going to put a point five zero. Okay. For the same reason, if, if the answer is 0.5 and that decimal place gets lost somewhere in translation in the documentation somewhere, um, as nurses are charting and, and doctors are charting and pharmacists are trying and everything like if that point, uh, if that decimal gets lost somewhere, uh, then it will, if you have it as 0.50, that's going to look like 50, which is a huge problem. <laughs> like if five was a problem, 50 is an even bigger problem. So we want to make sure that we don't have trailing zeros, right? Not following zeros. Remember nurses are leaders, not followers. You use um, leading zeros, not following zeros. So make sure you add a zero to the beginning. So it's 0 0.5, not 0 0.5 and not 0 0.50. I hope that makes sense. Same thing if you if you are doing like a tablet calculation and your number of tablets comes out to like 2.5, 2.5 tablets that you'll give a patient, you're not going to put a trailing zero on that, okay? You're going to put, it's just going to be 2.5. That's it. Unless they're asking you to round up, okay, to three. So it's going to be 2.5, not 2.50, because if that decimal gets lost, it's going to look like 250. We're not going to give 250 tablets to our patient, right? Not going to happen. So I hope that makes sense for those, um, uh, those zero rules. That's a really, really important one because like I said, even if you get the right answer, like 2.5, if you write it incorrectly on your exam and add that zero to the end or don't add a zero on the beginning, if you have to, then you're going to get it wrong. So that's a big that's a big, big problem. We don't want that to happen. Now, the next thing super important is to always double check your work. My friend, I cannot even tell you how many times double checking my work on a dose calc exam has saved my booty. I'm telling you, like when you are seriously, when you are taking a dose calc exam, like you are nervous, like I'm like shaking, you know, writing out these answers or typing these answers if it's in a computer. I've had to do it both ways in nursing school. I don't know what your nursing school uses, but seriously, it is so, so, it's like mentally exhausting. It is physically exhausting. You're like shaking and you're having an anxiety attack. Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but that has been my experience. Dose calc exams for me have been very, very nerve wracking. So if that is the case for you, I highly recommend that you double check your work because I, like I said, I have, I, it's, kind of, it's like embarrassing to me. It's a little embarrassing that I have caught myself so many times writing the wrong answer or just doing things wrong. But when I double check it, I get it, right? So you want to make sure that you do the math again, especially if you get as nervous as I do. Uh, when you're taking the dose calc exam, it's just, it's so important to just double check your work, make sure that you go back through it again, that you put everything where all the numbers in the right place where they need to go, that you crossed out the right units, um, and that you wrote your answer correctly like we just talked about. So all those principles, so, so key. <laughs> like I said, if you're like me and really struggle with that, high anxiety and stress before nursing school exams. I totally get it, my friend. I'm the same way. So I highly recommend that you double check your work. Now we talked a little bit about dose call conversions, but I want you to know that I actually have this 
awesome, awesome, awesome conversions uh, video for you that walks you through all the conversion factors that you need to know before your dose calc exam. So I highly recommend checking that video out. Watch it again and again and again before you take your nursing school exam. Because as the more you hear them and the more you see them, then the easier they're going to be to remember. Like we said, you gotta have those memorized. So I hope that video helps you out. And if you love this video, write love in the comments below. That's just what we do around here. And as always, my friend, go become the nurse that God created only you to be. And I'll see you over there in that next video.